What's going on guys, Duelum here, back again with another video. And today we're going to be going over all the counters you need to know in Cosmic Crucible Season 5. Uh, we're going to be talking about every single room. We're going to be talking about a lot of different variants that you can see in a lot of different rooms so that you're prepared for anything and you can climb as high as possible to get all those diamond orbs that are going to be progressing your roster faster than ever. So if you're ready, let's get into it. Starting off with room number one, we have Secret Defenders with Super Scroll. There's two ways to take out this team. One of them we've known, and the other one is a little bit of a newer counter that requires some specific tunes built up. The first way is going to be obviously the Tech Sack, which you're going to see here on the bottom of your screen. And then you're going to use Minerva's ult to take some health away from the Secret Defenders members, also making sure that they don't get a lot of charge. Um, there's been some talks and some uh, uses of Phoenix being put in here as well for another 20% damage, but it adds a little bit of RNG just in case one of them doesn't die and Minerva doesn't get enough turn meter to use her ult. So I usually just stick with the normal tech sack, which is going to be, like I said, on the bottom of your screen there, Drax in between two tech tunes that are going to be super low life that just die to super scroll turn one. Then you have Minerva ulting, and then what you're going to do is pause your game and then let it time out so that no other secret defenders take a turn. Then you'll come in with this team here. That's right, MOE APOC. Um, you're going to make sure that Apocalypse is next to Absorbing Man, and you're going to remove Ultron. You want to make sure that you do not use Echo here because Echo's, or I'm sorry, uh, Apox passive w may not proc if Echo is on the team because she's a hero. Remember, Apocalypse uh, passive retaliate is uh, determined by how many villain allies he has. So you want to make sure you mitigate that RNG so when Noir hits the Absorbing Man and will hit uh, Apox as well, he gets that retaliate and gets that speed up to make this match super easy. There's another way to beat this team without a sack, and that's going to require Super Scroll on offense. What you're going to do is use Drax on the far left, Hella, then Apocalypse, then Echo, and then you're going to use Super Scroll. With turn one, you're going to ability block their Super Scroll. Then this, their Ms. Marvel Hardlight is going to use her ultimate, hitting that Drax, making sure that no one else important gets rewound. If you have a bigger Echo, you can actually put Echo next to Drax to have her get rewound instead of Hella, but mine is a little bit smaller, so I keep, I keep Hella next to Drax. Then what you're going to do is make sure you use the, the Apocalypse ult when Ms. Marvel is taunting, which is going to be that next turn. And then you're saying to yourself, yeah, but then Apoc gets emp uh, empowered and then has to punch Ms. Marvel. But when you have Super Scroll as a striker, Super Scroll will assist and then put Disrupted on Ms. Marvel Hardlight. Then you can Falcon Punch their Super Scroll with Apocalypse. And then from there on, it's super, super easy and super straightforward. This counter works like a charm, and I even used it today to work extremely well and get me an 8365 in room one. Next up is going to be Secret Defenders plus Spider-Man Noir. In this room, you can use two different counters. There's one that's a lot better than the other one, but you do need a good superior six. The first counter is going to be MOE APOC and making sure that APOC is next to Absorbing Man on the corner. Uh, Spider-Man Noir is going to take his first turn, hit the Absorbing Man, and then also hit the APOC, causing APOC to retaliate and get that speed up and offense up. Next up, Kang's going to take his turn, and what you want to do is you want to make sure you special to make sure you get a slow on Ms. Marvel Hardlight. So you want a special somewhere near or somewhere around Ms. Marvel Hardlight, because if she doesn't have that slow, it's a coin flip if you're Titania or their Ms. Marvel goes first. Then, with Titania, you want to use the ultimate on Ms. Marvel Hardlight to get that disrupt and ability block for two turns. Then, you're going to use your ultimate from Apocalypse, and then you can punch out Robbie Reyes, usually, or Black Cat. If you target Robbie Reyes with the Apocalypse ult and then punch Black Cat, you might be able to kill both of them. But you got to kind of play it by ear. It's a little bit different depending on how big their teams are and how big your teams are. The next counter is going to be Superior 6 with Echo, and what you're going to do is you're going to take out Doc Ock and put Echo next to Lizard. So what happens here is after Spider-Man Noir takes his first turn, Lizard will take a turn because there's a Spider-Verse character on the other team, so he gets 40% speed bar. He's going to ult, and then he's going to take an absolute beating, but he has the health bar to be able to do it. Then you're just going to play it from there, target Robbie with every single attack you can so all the striker attacks go on him for the assists, and then finish off the match. It's super, super straightforward and even did a 700,000 punch up today when I saw it in Rolf Kieran's stream. So if you have a decently sized superior six and you want to use that, 
I would definitely recommend it, but if you have to use MOE APOC here, it's not a terrible use, but I prefer using MOE L. Next up, we're gonna be talking about Secret Defenders with Apocalypse, Quicksilver, and Dormammu. For the Apocalypse variant, you just wanna superior six it, and if you wanna make it even more efficient, you can use Mysterio to take away that immunity that Apocalypse has on spawn to make this matchup even easier. For the next matchup, you can also use uh, New Warriors to take out the Quicksilver variant of this, but you might wanna put Echo over Dagger to make sure that when Ms. Marvel takes her first turn, all of those assists don't end up killing one of your smaller New Warriors. As for the Dormammu variant, you can also use Superior Six, will absolutely wipe that. You can use the full Superior Six, and if you use New Warriors, again, drop Dagger and put in Echo to make sure you're getting those rewinds with the Firestar Ultimate, but you're also getting that benefit from the, from the Echo, reducing the assists. Next up, we're going to be talking about Secret Defenders with Super Scroll, but also with Thanos. What this does is this means you cannot use the tech sack that we talked about in the beginning of this video with the Minerva because when people die, Thanos will give energy to uh, uh, himself or adjacent cosmic allies, which means Super Scroll. So you might be coming in after doing a tech sack into a Super Scroll Ultimate, and that RNG is not something we're willing to deal with. There are two ways you can beat this team. What you can do is you can use a sack team with Echo if you have a smaller sack team so that all the assists don't end up killing. Super Scroll will take his turn first and then nobody will die because the team is so big so you can use someone like Bifrost, Rebirth, whoever's big enough to survive all of those hits and then come back in and do MOE APOC. The other way you can do this is a little bit of a newer way and it's really, really, really freaking cool. Right, like I said, you'll take in that big time Spider-Man, Vol, Omega Red, Kestrel, and then pretty much any fifth you want to. I've seen a lot of people use Iron Man Infinity War, but you could probably use someone like Nemesis who also has percent damage on his basic, or like a Morgan Le Fay if you want to throw Morgan Le Fay in there, that could also work. So how that counter works is Big Time is going to take a turn first before anybody else on the Secret Defenders team. He's going to use his basic attack on Super Scroll. And then since all of your allies are going to be strikers, they are all going to assist onto that Super Scroll that has defense down and he will get one shot. Yes, he will die immediately. Then all you have to do is you can let it time out from there or you can play it out from there and burn some extra cooldowns. It really doesn't matter. Then you can come in with new warriors plus Echo and absolutely decimate this team. So you can beat this team on a two shot without having to use Super Scroll or Apocalypse and being able to use them elsewhere can get you guys a big win. Next up, kicking off room two, we're gonna be talking about Infinity Watch. Infinity Watch is a great team because they spawn up with that safeguard, immunity, and defense up, meaning that they're always going to be in efficiency sync. So even at 900k, they still pull some decent teams because people are trying not to spend 30 turns trying to kill them. I've seen them a lot in room two, and the counters are going to be obviously Dorm, Undying, and then what you could do is if you ended up using a Superior 6 with Echo in room one, you can use a different Superior 6 that you subbed out for room one in here to take the revives off. That's going to buff the efficiency on here so much for you, and it's going to make it so much better. So like I said, Dormammu, which is going to shut down those assists from uh, Nebula, then using full Undying or just Hella Zim, if you don't have a Zombie Juggernaut, doesn't matter, using that Spider Slayer or Doc Ock, whoever you subbed out of room one, and then you could use like Omega Red, Mr. Negative, any of those that are going to do well against this team, uh, it doesn't really matter, honestly. Anybody that puts out bleeds is a good choice, um, but all of those choices are going to make it a lot better to take on Infinity Watch a little bit more efficiently. Next up, I see a lot of Pegasus on defense in room two. The problem with Pegasus is they're slow. But the problem is, if you don't kill them quickly, they're going to do some pretty big damage to you. As you can see here, Kestrel's always going to be the biggest one. She's sitting around 450k, so Kestrel can sit there and just one-shot tunes that you're not prepared to die because you didn't sit there and take this team seriously enough. Good counters for this are going to be New Warriors, if you're lucky enough, but I doubt it. You can also use Eternals with Shang-Chi, Cap Sam, and... Anybody else is a fifth, maybe Omega Red if you need some more damage. There's also a counter called the Saw Owner counter, which is going to be Eternals, Omega Red, Shang-Chi, and then Falcon. Falcon doesn't need to be very high, but his special is going to give a lot of turn meter to your team. So you end up lapping them and the Eternals just do what the Eternals do. The Omega Red's also there for more damage, so even if you're seeing a 2.2, 2.3 million Pegasus, they're able to absolutely wipe this team. 
So you have some good options here if you're not able to use the new warriors, but if you're lucky enough to use the new warriors here and you don't see somewhere else they're needed, new warriors absolutely wipes the floor with them. Next up is going to be the dreaded superior six. If you see them on defense, a lot of people just look at this and go, what the hell do I do to this thing? So here's what you do. You use doom, apoc, and full undying, and it absolutely slaps this from what I've seen. Now, if you don't have apoc because you used him in room one, another option could be the mirror. Now, I will not recommend using the mirror because it is not great, but as a last resort, it is an option. It's not a good option, but it is an option. The only other way that I see this team being beat on a one shot is you're all, you can also use super, uh, super scroll with two villains and two heroes. So if you have seen superior six spawns with an absolute metric butt ton of buffs, which makes super scroll go three times in a row, I believe two or three times in a row. And he just absolutely deletes everybody, which is great. So you want to make sure you take in two heroes and two villains to make sure Super Scroll gets all those buffs you want him to get uh, on his kit. And then this team goes down pretty easily. The only other team I've seen in room two is going to be Gamma. Gamma is beaten by a, a number of things, honestly, now, but they still need to be taken seriously. New Warriors is always on the top of most people's list when you want to take them out. But there's another option that's also really good. It just needs to, it needs you to make sure that you have some things on offense. So what you can do is you can have Doom, Quicksilver, and Star-Lord to make sure that Star, uh, Doom gets the energy, turn one from Star-Lord. Doom can ult turn one, take Quicksilver on the ride, and he absolutely deletes everybody on the field. The other two that you want to take to this is going to be Red Guardian and Emma on the corner to make sure that when Red Hulk uses his special, he hits the Red Guardian and kills him and the Emma so that none of your important tunes are getting rewound. The problem with that is the efficiency sink is a little bit less because you're losing two, one to maybe two tunes right off the rip, but only needing Quicksilver and Doom and Star-Lord where you're not using him anywhere else is a great way to absolutely wipe this room really quickly and really efficiently. Next up, we're going to be talking about Darkhold with Quicksilver, but this also means this can be Darkhold with Doom, Darkhold with uh, Dormammu. It really doesn't matter who the fifth is in here. Unless it's Apoc, then it changes it up a little bit, but nobody's going to put Apoc on defense with Darkhold. So what you're going to do for this room is you're going to put Tangled, Nova, Emma, and Kestrel. This room gets deleted by that counter every single time. This is in room three, so you want to make sure you target uh, Doctor Strange Heartless with the 2099 ultimate to steal the death proofs. Then you are going to ult on Quicksilver to make sure he gets stunned from the Spider Weaver ultimate with trauma. Kestrel usually pings him to death and then you're just going to play it out from there. It's super straightforward, super easy, super efficient, and should be the way you go every single time you see this in any room. It doesn't matter what room, this counter absolutely slaps it. Do not sleep on this counter. It works in every single room. No matter what, this is the one you should be using to take out Darkhold Quicksilver. The next defense you see a lot in room three is going to be Black Order with Quicksilver. So the way you want to take this out, you can use Unlimited X-Men if for some reason you saved them for offense and don't have them on defense, which I wouldn't recommend. You can also use Superior 6 and use Vulture over Spider Slayer so that you flip the speed ups and turn them to slow on the enemy team on spawn. Also, you will have speed up. Um, if you do use that counter, make sure you do not use the Craven ultimate because when Quicksilver has trauma and slow, his passive means he continually tries to remove that slow and he gets 20% speed meter, but he can't remove the slow because of the trauma. So he's going to end up getting full turn meter and then specialing and ulting way quicker than normal. So you want to make sure that he doesn't do that. So don't use the Craven ultimate and just stick with the Craven special. This will mitigate this team entirely because Vulture will ult turn one and rewind everybody and no one will take a turn, probably not even Quicksilver either, as long as you take him out quickly enough. So like I said, the goal here is to be used superior six. If you have unlimited X-Men on offense, you can also use unlimited X-Men on offense. And I believe that is it. Yep. That's going to be it for everything on the counters there. Let's get into our next counter. The last uh, defense I see in room three quite a lot is going to be Black Order with Super Scroll. So what you do here is you're going to use Doom, Apocalypse, and Emma. Everybody else does not matter. 
Your Doom needs to be at minimum level 95, gear 17 for this to work. If not, you need to use Dormammu for a revive to make sure just in case your uh, Doom does die. It's that insurance policy. If your Doom is big enough, you don't have to worry about that and you can save Dormammu for elsewhere. So what's going to happen is you're going to spawn in. Super Scroll is going to ult you turn one and then it's going to push your Doom. And even if it kills your Doom, it will still push him. He will revive and then he will come back and he will ult right away. Then you can ult with him. It takes Apocalypse on the ride. Make sure you ha you soften up Super Scroll a little bit with the Doom. Um, if you didn't soften him up enough with the Doom, make sure you use the Apocalypse special on him on Super Scroll, uh, the turn one with Apocalypse. And then you can ult, Falcon Punch the Super Scroll, and then the rest of this team does not even matter because Thanos is usually the only big one and the only damage threat. But after that, you can kind of rip through this team. It's super easy. Essentially, they go boom, then you go boom. Kicking off room four, we got the Unlimited X-Men. The way to kill Unlimited X-Men in room four is going to be super straightforward. You can use New Warriors, you can use Masters of Evil, and you can also use Superior Six. It's a fight that we've seen a bunch of times, but I want to make it a little bit better so you guys can optimize this fight the best you can. If at any point you can target Gambit and Dazzler at the with the Firestar Ultimate, so you want to hit primary and adjacent, you want to do that as best as you can because it makes this matchup go way faster, puts an offense down on Gambit, rewinds all of them, gets a bunch of bleeds, and if you have a massive Firestar, you can actually end up killing the Gambit with the, all the bleeds that you spread to this clump here, and same thing with Dazzler, so they never even take a turn. If you're going to run this on defense, what I would say is move Gambit over here to make sure that you can't rewind Dazzler and Gambit. And if you go down the middle, you have a little bit of RNG with the Phantom X dodging, which has messed with me before. But all in all, it's an okay defense, but there's better options we're going to talk about. Another variant that's becoming super popular with Unlimited X-Men is starting to throw some extreme members into the mix here. Now, remember, this is room four, and what's going to happen here is Nightcrawler is going to special turn one. He spawns with charge, which means he's going to give 20% speed bar to all X-Men allies. That is going to mean Rogue is going to go a lot faster, Gambit's going to go a lot faster, and Phoenix will go a lot faster. So the only way to beat this is you're going to use Masters of Evil or Superior Six. This team can no longer be beaten by uh, New Warriors because of the speed manipulation that Nightcrawler gives. Also, you're going to have a lot of issues with putting everybody in stealth with New Warriors, and then Phoenix has a possibility of going off if you don't focus her. But if you do focus her, then the reflexive taunt goes on Rogue, and then Phoenix is then going to use her special, which is going to do 20% damage, and it's a mess. So you want to make sure you're using Masters of Evil or Superior Six here if you see Nightcrawler with any Unlimited X-Men variant. This is the defense that I'm running, and this is the one that I've seen has messed with people the most and has made people take this the absolute most seriously. You can also put this in Room 5, but we'll talk about that when we're talking about Room 5. Kicking off Room 5, we got the exact same team we just talked about from Room 4. But in Room 5, you have to remember, they are going to clear all negative effects on them if they don't have trauma on them. Now you're probably thinking, I can use New Warriors, they have trauma. No, still the same problem. It's not going to work. You're, you also still need Superior 6 and MOE because MOE is just strong enough to be able to take out everybody because Kang is a monster. Or you have to use Superior 6 and Superior 6 runs this over by rewinding them a bunch and then you won't have any issues whatsoever. Placement's a little off here, so don't look at the placement. But if you see this in Room 5 or Room 4, make sure you're using Superior 6 or you're using Master Z Evil. I can't stress this enough. Do not mess around with this defense. It will catch you by surprise and you will die. Next up is going to be Death Seed, which is what a lot of people are running in room five, even though I think it's a terrible defense, honestly. What's going to happen here is you want to use Eternals plus Cap Sam plus Shang-Chi plus Nick Fury. You have to bring the Nick Fury in because if you don't, then after Magneto's turn, Archangel will also go and then it causes problems and he, can, he will ult and possibly delete somebody. So what you can do is let Magneto go, then you're going to use the Nick Fury special, then you're going to use Eternals to absolutely blow them to hell. The other team that can be used to beat this is instead of using uh, Cap Sam, you can use Echo to reduce the assist chance so that you don't have to worry about Magneto targeting somebody like Icarus, then Dark Beast assisting, then 
uh, Magneto hitting again, and then Icarus doesn't clear the bleeds, then you have a problem. The other counter that you can use here is going to be a mirror or with Dormammu over Psylocke. Whether you're doing the mirror or the uh, counter with Dormammu, you want to use the special on Archangel from your Magneto. Do not ult because they will clear the blind so it doesn't matter. You want to special with Archangel. That's going to put a slow on him. Then you want to trauma stun him. So just in case if anybody does die, there's no issues with Archangel rewinding people. Because remember, you have Dormammu with the revives that are making sure your team is alive even after they die once. So putting that trauma stun on Archangel, make sure no one's going to get rewind. Then you just chase kills to focus down people that are going to die to uh, anybody that's taking their turn and then get rewound. And then you get control and then it's an easy fight from there. Next up in room five, we're going to be talking about Secret Defenders Super Scroll. In room five, you have to remember there's a mutant on here. That's going to be Ms. Marvel Hardlight. Hard Light. So she is going to be clearing positive, uh, negative effects on her turn. So putting that ability block and disrupt on... Ms. Marvel with Titania can change things because she's going to clear it when she takes her turn. So what you can do to counter this is going to be obviously Tech Sack with MOE APOC. It runs just about the exact same, but you will end up having to Falcon Punch Ms. Marvel sometimes. Uh, if you can do enough damage to her with all of your primary and adjacent damage on her and kill her before that happens, it's great. The other way to take this out is going to be Drax on the far left, Doom, then you're going to use Vol. APOC and Super Scroll. That will be able to one-shot this just as it was able to one-shot it in room one when you used Hella instead of Vol. You're going to ability block the Super Scroll, do your normal abilities, and then everybody dies pretty damn quickly. Kicking off room six, we got Darkhold Super Scroll. The counter to this is going to be Cable, Emma, Just Weaver, do not put in 2099, APOC, and Nova. What you're going to do here to make this a little bit more efficient is you're going to take a Spider Weaver and make her a Blue Skirmisher 4 just to make sure that stun lands on Super Scroll turn 1. If it doesn't land, it's not the end of the world because then Super Scroll Special will miss. Then you're going to use the APOC Slap and you're going to end up uh, Falcon Punching the Super Scroll and it's pretty much over from there. It's a super easy matchup that goes really, really well um, and it's super efficient. Just got to use APOC and Spider Weaver and it's over. Next up in room six is going to be Gamma with Super Scroll. For this, all you're going to do is use APOC with the Eternals, and then you're going to use a pre-taunt on the end, and then use Emma Frost. What's going to happen here is the Super Scroll will take his turn, and he will make sure your Red Guardian and your Emma, he does the special over there so he doesn't rewind anybody. Then APOC and Eternals just pop off and absolutely destroy this team. Apocalypse, you want to make sure you Falcon Punch the Super Scroll as usual to make sure that it's a non-event, and then you're good to go. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Let's get to the next one. Next up, we got Super Scroll with Superior 6 in room 6. For this, you're going to be running Drax, Doom, Vol, Super Scroll of your own, and Apocalypse. If you don't have a Super Scroll of your own, you could try to sack this and then use maybe New Warriors. But honestly, it's going to be pretty rough because Super Scroll gets so much turn meter on spawn. But again, that one shot is going to be Drax, Doom, Apocalypse, Sus, and... Vol, sorry, I had to look down there, and Vol, um, and it absolutely destroys this. So Doom, it takes either Vol or Apocalypse on the ride, depending on who's bigger. Vol is pretty massive, has a lot of damage, and then this just gets absolutely destroyed. What you're going to do also is make sure you have um, Drax next to... Um, next to Doom, so that Doom ends up getting pushed, and then once Doom gets pushed, the match is over. Well, there you have it. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I hope you guys learned something from this. I also hope you guys can keep coming back to this as you look at your Cosmic Crucibles throughout the weeks for the rest of Season 5, and you can use this as a guide to help you. There's going to be extensive timestamps listed down below in the description to help you guys out. There's also going to be a link to a Google document that a lot of content creators have worked hard on that will also have a link to a YouTube video so you can watch the fight in real time to make it a little bit easier for you. As for some counters, you might see them in different rooms than what we talked about today, such as Infinity Watch or Gamma with Super Scroll or even New Avengers I've seen thrown around in a couple different rooms. But the counters don't really change for it depending on what room they're in. But if you do see New Avengers, you can always use Tangled or New Warriors on them if you're lucky enough to be able to use New Warriors and they get slapped pretty hard. 
I haven't seen them too much. That's why I didn't figure I would talk about them as a whole team in a room. But I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys get to use this as much as I do. And I hope you guys start doing better in Cosmic Crucible. And maybe I'll see you in my bracket. But once again, this has been Doolum. Hope you guys enjoyed. Later, y'all. Mm-hmm.